Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for uh, coming up on November 10th, 2024. Um, and it is, uh, we just have had Reformation and All Saints for those in traditions that commemorate those festivals. And now we are back in ordinary time for a few more weeks before Advent starts. And we've got the story of Jonah, chapter one, chapter three, and chapter four, if optional. Um, the task when preaching a book like Jonah or a book like Ruth really is, uh, essentially to preach the whole book, unless you're doing a series on it, it's, it's really to preach the whole story uh, in one shot. And so um, you've got, you've got, first of all, you got to figure out your strategy. What are you going to do there? So contextually, Jonah is a weird book. Um, it's one of the prophets. Uh, it, uh, so in the, in the canon, it's a prophetic book. Even, even in the Jewish canon, it's on the scroll of the 12, 12, shorter prophetic books. However, it's much more like the books of Ruth or even maybe Esther in that it's probably a post-exilic sort of novella sort of thing. It's yeah. narrative. It's yeah. not a collection of prophetic messages. Um, in terms of time, uh, the prophet Jonah is, most, is usually understood to be a prophet of the Northern Kingdom. And you remember the Northern Kingdom is destroyed uh, eventually by Assyria. And if you want to feel what the uh, Northern Kingdom thought about Assyria, uh, read the book of Nahum, which uh, is a book about, uh, about, about rage towards Assyria. So therefore you get the, the sense of the outrage that Jonah um, does everything wrong. So uh, whether you, uh, in chapter one, go to that Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, and Jonah goes the opposite way, and he flees. Uh, so he does the wrong thing. And uh, even there, you know, so you could focus on the story. The interesting thing is both in chapter one and chapter three, they're really parallel. You get uh, a group of foreigners, uh, so like whether Jonah's at sea or Nineveh, who has a leader, and then the leader he, the, does the right thing, whether it's the captain of the ship or the king, and Jonah does the wrong thing, and he's the Israelites. And um, and then in the end, chapter four, which is optional, you get Jonah again. He should he should give thanks that the city has uh, repented, but he doesn't because he doesn't want Nineveh to be spared. So I don't know about you guys. I read this text as a text that is trying to wrap its he head around what does it mean to confess that we have a gracious God. Uh, if God has grace on one's enemies, um, is, it, is that good news? So Jonah in uh, chapter four says that, uh, confesses this brief sort of creed-like fragment, I knew that you are a God gracious and merciful, slow to anger, bounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing, that's what I don't like about you, God. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's, of course, God's uh, self-description from Exodus 33 or 34, 34, I think. Uh, but in, in Jonah's mouth, it's an accusation, right? I mm -hmm. knew you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, right? It uh, makes, makes Jonah mad. Uh, I love this book. I mean, it's just uh, it's just a fun book. I think our commentator uh, mentions the humor in it, right? The, uh, one of which is God uses uh, things of the natural world to uh, to to you know uh, educate this recalcitrant prophet, right? God appoints uh, appoints the great wind that uh, is that God hurls on the ship, and God appoints the the big fish to swallow Jonah and God appoints the, the plant to grow up. And then the worm, God appoints the worm and God appoints the, uh, the East wind to, to make Jonah uncomfortable and hot. And, uh, uh, and all of these things, including the animals, the cattle who are covered with sackcloth and bellowing their repentance out to God, all of these natural creatures and, and the Ninevites, you know, the evil empire, are all, and the sailors, are all more res responsive to God's call uh, 
than this Israelite prophet. So perhaps a, a, an appropriate text to read, uh, I, I mentioned the United States presidential election uh, last week. This, of course, comes after the election, perhaps a good text to remind people that God uh, God loves their enemies, too. <laughs> Can we say, just a reminder, we are recording this before the election. Yes. We do not know the results. So if you're which, listening which kind to of, us. It's nice. Just, yeah, don't yeah. don't read. Yeah. Don't any read anything our, into anything. it. Because Correct. there's nothing to be read. We have no idea uh, as we are recording this. But I do appreciate uh, the reminder um, because it tells us just how living the word of God is. Um, when uh, rabbis tell this story, they have traditionally uh, read this story as, don't be like Jonah. Uh, this is uh, not the attitude uh, of the witness of God. and um, But there, there really is a challenge here. Uh, are we uncomfortable because of God's true grace? And, and we talked about this before in terms of the re- repetition of humanity and the heroes throughout scripture who have fallen short. And so now we have a prophet who, um, I don't know, this is one of the stories Jesus likes. Doesn't Jesus cu- quote from this one? I, I, I like to remind us that that Jesus um, noticed this is this uh, portions of this story. Um, but the challenge that you, you've you raised at this text race is so important for us, particularly now. It doesn't matter the outcome of the re- election. There will be those who are disappointed. And the question is whether you are a victor, whether you feel like you are a victor, or you feel like you've been defeated. In the name of Christ, in your identity as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, Are you celebrating that God loves your enemies and calls us not just to love our neighbors, which might be kind of easy when we realize the call of Jesus is to love our enemies, especially now? Yeah, thank you for that. It's um, when you mentioned... um when you mentioned the uh, the rabbis and um, the story of Jonah, strangely uh, from a Christian, at least from my Christian perspective, the book of Jonah is read on Yom Kippur, mm-hmm. uh, the Day of Atonement, uh, which is the holiest uh, one of the. It's uh, for some Jews, it's the holiest day in the year of Judaism. It's uh, the 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 high holy days are Yom Kippur and um, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, which are in the fall. And uh, and um, in, so your neighbors will have read this story. Your Jewish neighbors will have read this story in mid-October. Um, mm-hmm. So just a few weeks ago. Um, and it's read, it's read in Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, as a reminder of repentance. And that, uh, that because um, it's a story of repentance and the offer of repentance uh, the humorous part of it, the sort of tall, the tall tale part of the story probably doesn't fit what I think of as a day of atonement, but that's how our neighbors read it. And that's a good reminder. Um, and, and I do think it's, if you want to celebrate the love of God for yourself in grace, uh, then it's a good, uh, whether you're really happy and you uh, about the election, if you're in the United States, and again, we know not every, all of our listeners are, although I think the United States ele- elections do affect many people outside the United States. Um, or if you're really angry that uh, that the bad guys from your perspective got in, remember, God loves them all. That's a really good reminder, Joy. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.